What's up guys, I was here with another video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a subject that has kind of been going around and that's been circulating nowadays and that subject is the racial divide in the church right now in the body of Christ. And we all know, let's go ahead and just address the big elephant in the room. There's a lot of racial tension coming uh, going on right now. The country is pretty much divided. I'm not going to put the blame on who I think is responsible for the racial divide in this country. Some people will say it's Trump. Some people will say it's Obama. I got my own opinions about that, but we're not really going to get into that. Um, my main focus is on the church, the body of Christ. And it's not just black church, white church or whatever, but there is this racial divide within the body of Christ. And today what I want to do is that I actually want to address that in this video. Now, as people know, I've done a couple of videos addressing some of the things going on in the black church. And, you know, as always, I get a bunch of hate mail because a lot of people are saying, well, it's not just a black church. And by you saying black church, you know, that means that it is. Uh, that, that you're kind of feeding into this divide or this divisive system when you talk about the black church. Man, you know, just like I explained in another video of mine, uh, the reason why I say black church is because these are churches that are predominantly black and they have certain traditions and they do things that is not, number one, found in the Bible and number two is not found in a lot of other churches. So basically the reason why I say black church is because I grew up, you know, in these black churches. And one thing that I can say is that there is racial division in the black church. And I mean, I'm just putting it out there. OK, this, these are the things that a lot of people don't want to talk about. They kind of want to sweep this up under the rug. But there are a lot of people who are in the black church that consider themselves black first and then disciple of Christ second. They don't believe that they are a part of the body of Christ and their skin color comes secondary to the gospel. So a lot of that goes on in these churches. And that's why I'm taking the time to address this now, because feeling like that just because you're black and you do things a certain way in a church that kind of gives you justification to kind of push scripture to the side just for a moment and then focus on the social issues that go on in our country or in our world or in our society, you know, in general. So a lot of people think that, you know, as being a person of color, that they can separate or segregate themselves from someone. Uh, I was just watching, watching James White uh, show the other day, which is called the dividing line. And he kind of touched on a subject where there is this pastor. And as I'm making this video, um, right after I get ready to edit it and all of that, I may go in and throw up a clip or throw up some pictures or something of this pastor who actually said that he believes that the black church should be segregated from any other churches that they should just be there <laughs> shouldn't be be some type of uh, integration of the churches because as black people we do things or we tend to do things differently and based on our culture that that is a reason or that's some type of justification on why we do things differently and i was actually watching uh, another youtube video of a brother who i respect but i'm not going to say his name um and he was basically explaining this about how there is a difference, you know, within the body of Christ and, and how, you know, black people, we've had our own experiences, you know, when it comes to segregation, when it comes to slavery, um, you know, racial injustice, all of these types of things and how the church, you know, the black church in particular has stayed strong. But what I've seen happen nowadays, instead of the churches back then of how they took scripture and then they applied it to the social norms or 
the social issues or the social injustices that was happening back then. They took scripture and they said, well, we're going to live our lives according to scripture, based on what scripture says. We're not just going to live these arbitrary lives and, and, you know, do something outside of the word of God. So we're going to do everything according to the Bible and then we're going to apply it. And that is what happened. They went out and when you look at guys like Martin Luther King and they, him and other activists like that, they went out, they protested, and they protested to people who claimed to be Christian. Because our government at the time, it was highly Christian. Uh, a lot of people, you know, it, it wasn't as secular as it was today. So people were, were more open to changing laws according to scripture because these were i mean the politicians and the people who were in charge of setting and writing these laws they actually went the church themselves and they actually claimed to be christian as well so when the activists back then like martin luther king and uh you know you look at people like rosa parks you know just to kind of throw out some some names that you guys may be familiar with when they went out and they protested, they were basically showing that these other people who were setting these laws against black people were being hypocrites. You know, they were going out and they were saying, well, if you guys claim to be Christian, but let's read what the Bible says. The Bible says this, and you guys are doing the total opposite of that. And I think that that is what eventually turned the hearts of the people who were, uh, you know, in power to change their minds and, and change their viewpoints on how black people were being treated, you know, in this country, which led to the civil rights movement, uh, you know, and stuff like that. Now, I look at the black church today, and the black church seems like that is trying to hold on to this, to this image of trying to be these social justice warriors, okay? A lot of black churches are really liberal they are strictly democratic or they just follow the democrat you know uh, party you know they're just against republicans for whatever reason and it's just a pattern it's just these cycles that continue to go on in a church but a lot of these churches now are not grounded in in the scriptures they're basically grounded on social justice issues and what actually opened my eyes to this was that I remember when the whole Trayvon Martin thing went down and Ebenezer Baptist Church, all of the members came and they had on hoodies and all of this stuff here to kind of show their support for the whole Trayvon Martin situation. Now, me as a believer, me as a person who is who reads the Bible, who understands what the Bible is about, I don't take sides when it comes to things like that because first of all what's right or, what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong number one is always two sides of, to the story and i'm not going to get on get into my own opinion about the whole trayvon martin thing my goal is to bring the gospel and the gospel says that there is that sin exists in the world and these are why we have these problems it's because of sin a lot of people like to say well it's because of sin but is because white people have done this to black people for so long that now these things are just starting to happen. There's this is why we have so many divides and there's so much racial inequality and all of that. But all of that falls under under the umbrella of sin. And once you realize that these things are sin and sinful, there's basically only one solution to this. And solution, and the only solution is Christ. The gospel, spreading the gospel, is what changes men's heart from stone to flesh. And this is why we have these issues, because a lot of people's hearts have been hardened. Now, the reason why I'm touching on this is, you know, like I said before, I'm seeing a lot of pastors, especially a lot of guys who should be ashamed of themselves for trying to push these social agendas in the church and they're doing that 
and they're kind of straying away from the gospel. And this is the reason why, you know, like a couple of videos that I made showing all of the, you know, crap and all of the just trash that's just going on in the churches. People are kind of being led away from the gospel because their church doesn't have a solid foundation. It's not rooted and it's not grounded in the gospel. That's why there's so many problems in the black church. Now, one thing that you have to understand is that when I say the black church, the black church is not something that is a valid institution. That's not something that we can call something that is a, a strictly Christian separate institution. It's actually more of an ideology. And that is what the black church is. It's just this big ideology that that has just crept in into the body of Christ. And, and people are just so wrapped up in this ideology that I'm different from you because the color of my skin. And when a church has that has that mindset, what tends to happen is that you get people who are who start to kind of agree with these guys from the black conscious community and all of this stuff here. And after a while, they basically say, well, I might as well go ahead and join these guys and just leave the church altogether because I agree totally what these guys are saying. You know, I don't have to continue to go to church and, you know, listen to some pastor or some preacher. You know, if I disagree with, with what some pastor or preacher is saying, you know, I can go running on, run over to these guys and, you know, I, I'll join that movement. And that's what's happening in our church. You know, uh, and then you got some of these black people who are running over to the Hebrew Israelites. And, you know, they're believing that that their melanin, their melanin count in their skin is something that's just so important. So now they have to make themselves believe that they are part of some special people because their skin is dark which is untrue, <laughs> you know, you got a lot of people falling into these cults and falling into these false ideologies based on the color of their skin. When in fact, science proves that all of us, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, uh, European, I mean, no, no matter who you are, we're all the same genetically. And science proves this. The only thing that's different is that my nose may be a little wider. My lips may, may be a little fuller. Uh, my hair texture is different. My melanin count is different from someone who is European or Asian. And my culture may, may be a little different the way I was brought up. But see, the Bible tells us that when we're in Christ, we're all in Christ. It doesn't matter if you're black, white. You know, uh, the Bible says Jew, Gentile, uh, Scythian, Asian. It, none of that stuff matters because one, once we're in Christ, our goal is to bring and spread the gospel to the lost sheep, those people who are God's elect. And I know that some of you are, uh, maybe a lot of you are probably not going to agree with this video, but I can guarantee you this. Those who have actually been called by God, will listen to this message and they will they will agree 100%. Only those who have not been called by God and those who are not the elect of God, they can't understand or they can't even comprehend the message in this video because they want to believe that there should be a segregation or there is some sort of division in the body of Christ and then that is okay. That I can be black and I can just say that I'm a part of the black church and... I can kind of be over here in my own little area while everyone else go and do their own thing. And we can have this, this segregation within a body and that that's just totally fine. Like Christ would be totally for that. But just like Jesus said in the book of Matthew, he says, you know, how can a house stand if it's divided against himself? And the reason why Jesus said that was because the Pharisees were actually saying that, you know, uh, trying to call Jesus a devil and a demon and all of this stuff because he was actually out uh, preaching and teaching to these guys. 
So they said that, well, hey, you know, this guy must be a devil. You know, he must be a demon. And and Jesus basically said, well, how can a house that's divided continue to stand? How can it stand? And what has happened is that we've now accepted this division, which is totally unbiblical. Me, I watch different pastors, different preachers, uh, different guys who just dedicate their lives to spreading the gospel and when I look at all of these guys and I'm able to take so much information from so many people who all have different backgrounds, like for instance, you know, like I watch, um, you know, like I watch Todd Friel of Wretched Radio, you know, I watch Paul Washer, um, you know, Vody Bauckham, you know, Francis Chan. Um, and I mean, the list just goes on and on. Uh, Ravi Zacharias, Conrad and Bayway. You know, I watch all of these guys, of course, James White, I watch him as well, but there is no difference in all of these men. Now, I'm not saying that all of these men totally agree on their theology, and I'm not saying that I totally agree with all of these men's theology, but when you are in Christ, your skin color does not matter. The only thing that matters is you preaching this gospel out to the lost. The ones who need to hear it. You know, it's not about trying to get together and trying to have this 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 type of social uh, this this type of social gathering. You know, we're not church is not to gather everyone together to make everyone get along and to teach people to be you know really nice to each other and to be tolerant of each other. No, that's 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 not what Christianity is about. It's about learning the word of God, being obedient to it, and then spreading the gospel. That's what we're here for. And I know that I get a lot of hate mail, and I'm probably going to get even more hate mail over this video. But frankly, I really don't care. Uh, because my job is to spread the gospel, not to make you guys like me or have you guys agree with what I say. Now, if you do agree with what I say, then, hey, that's fine. You know? But if you guys don't, then that's still fine too. But when you say that you disagree, is it because you're triggered by what I'm saying? Or is it because you can actually look inside of the word and look inside of the scripture and show me exactly where I'm wrong, where I'm not abiding by or following scripture correctly? Those are the only two things that you guys can basically judge me on. So... In Christ, there is no difference. There really is no difference. And this is why I'm so adamant about us just coming together. You know, I want to be able to see us really start to live this stuff out. I want to see, you know, blacks, whites, Asians, Hispanics. I want to see all of us be able to, to just be able to worship together, uh, have church together, have service together. And there isn't just this divide because this racial divide has become a stumbling block in the church. It really has. This is one of the things this I think that this is one of the biggest stumbling blocks in the church right now is this racial divide. And it's unbiblical. It is very unbiblical that we're all dividing or we're segregating ourselves because of skin color. I look at the black church today and a lot of these things are not getting addressed. No one's really speaking on it. And I look at a lot of black people who are sending these churches and their theology is all off because let's just face it. There's a lot of people who are sitting around not reading the Bible. They don't, they, they have no idea, <laughs> you know, of what's in that book that they claim to study. They really don't understand it. And instead of someone taking the time to break it down to them and let them know and let them and, and have them to understand exactly what's going on in the book and why we have so many problems with racial um, segregation and, and uh, racial inequality and all these other things that, that, that are going on in our world. Instead of having people to explain exactly what the root issue is, it's kind of like we sweep it under the rug and we allow guys to get up and pop lock and, you know, we play secular music 
you know, um, in the churches. And then we got people who claim to be Christian. They're endorsing, you know, these secular singers and secular rappers and all of this stuff here. And, and I mean, it's just it's just one big mess in the black church. You know, I mean, you got people leaving the church, going into the conscious community, going into all of these black cults, the Nation of Islam. Um, I mean, just going into all of this stuff, all of, all of this just wicked stuff. And no one's really seeing that this is a problem. This is a problem. And what kind of gets me is that I get, I've gotten some of these white people who have called themselves rebuking me for using the term black church. They don't watch, they don't watch my video because if they watch the video, then they will see within the first few minutes of my video that I say that there is foolishness going on in the black church, but it's not just a black church. It's other churches as well. So, they call themselves rebuking me because I use the term black church. And these are people who I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that these people do not interact with maybe one or two black people on a daily basis, just to put it out there. And I'm pretty sure that none of these people have actually attended a black church, a predominantly black church, to see the things that go on in these churches that need to be addressed. They have it, but it's so easy for them to look at my videos and rebuke me because they're more of these social justice warriors. These are uh, people who they think that they're actually defending someone and they think that they have to step up and try to defend, you know, black people. And sometimes they think that they need to defend black people from other blacks when they're calling out the mess and the foolishness that's going on. So a guy like me, they they think that they're just going to go ahead and rebuke me because I actually have the nerve or, or, or I have um, uh, the gall, if you would, for me to actually address some of these things that are going on in the church, things that are killing the church, especially the black church. And I get rebuked for that. I mean, it's kind of funny to me, but it's sad. But my thing is, is that you haven't you you haven't been to these churches. You don't look at these mega churches like I do and see thousands of people in these places called church. And majority of these people are headed to hell. They're headed straight to hell. Because they're in there so they can congregate, make friends, kind of you know, stop worrying about the issues that they have. You know, just for a few hours, they want to be entertained. They want to see the choir get up there and sing some really nice songs that they can clap and sing and stomp along to. And, you know, the pastor's going to get up there and teach health, wealth, prosperity, keep saying that, hey, you, you just need to hold on. Jesus is going to make a change in your life. And if you just if you just continue to just hold on and make sure that you're paying your tithes and offerings, you're going to start seeing some things change in your life. And some of y'all, some of you guys have been out and you've gone through the worst of the worst situation. But I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus is the answer and he's about to do something big in your life. See, it's easy to be a prosperity teacher. I can do that because that's what they say every Sunday. None of these people are really getting the word of God and then being able to take it back out into the world and be expected of have of being ridiculed and, and mocked and scoffed. A lot of these people are not they're not ready for that. A lot of these people they'll they'll sit back and and they'll hang out with co-workers and, and family members, you know, who are doing drugs, alcohol, smoking, all of this stuff here. They won't say anything to these people and say, hey listen, you know, I don't think that you guys should be engaging in some of these acts. You know, thus says the Lord and continue to present them with scripture. They they can't do that. They won't do it. Because it's a status. They're trying to keep up a certain status. And, and, and they're not getting fed. What they need to be fed from the church. Or from their pastor. And that's why I say a lot of these people. Are sending churches. On their way to hell. And it's not because. They're just misinformed. 
But it's because they want to be in that setting. They don't want to go out and, and really find truth. They'd rather sit up under these pastors who's going to tell them everything that they want to hear for a couple of hours on any given Sunday. And they're going to pay their tithes and offerings. And they think that that's it. Oh, I'm saved. You know, when I die, God is going to save me based on that. My church attendance was nice. Uh, my tithes were great. And, and, and that's what they're going to base. That's what they're going to base their salvation on. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to go ahead and make this quick video um, talking about this, this stumbling block that's in the church. And like I said before, guys, and I'll keep saying it, there is no such thing as a black person, a white person, an Asian person, Hispanic person when it comes to the body of Christ. It doesn't matter about your cultural background. Yeah, black people have been enslaved. Okay, this happened over 160 to 200 years ago. Segregation, yeah, that happened about 60 years ago. Not saying that the stuff didn't happen. Yeah, it happened. But if it wasn't for people like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And people actually taking the Bible and actually going out to fight for the rights of black people during the civil rights movement, then I'm pretty sure we would have progressed far from uh, from segregation right now. I mean, I don't I don't think that that segregation would, would be over if you would have left it in the hands of the atheists. I mean, the atheists are the ones who basically promote uh, segregation, racial segregation. You know, if all you got to do is read up on the books of guys like Charles Darwin, you know, it promotes a lot of segregation. I mean, you know, how he... Uh, uh, how he believes that black people are somehow inferior to white people, the more uh, straighter or the more blonder your hair is or the bluer your eyes or the whiter your skin, you know, that's what makes you a more perfect human than a person who has darker skin and kinky hair. They believe that black people are the closest things to the missing link. You know, we're almost like that missing link between humans and apes. So of course the atheist wasn't the atheist didn't fight for segregation and yeah, they didn't fight for the abolishment of slavery. The people who claim to be all comedic and all of that stuff, they were nowhere to be found. You found out one person fighting for the slaves, for the abolishment of slaves. But I mean they they piggyback off of the success and off of the blood, sweat, and tears of Christian who Christians who actually went out there and fought against this. Suffering during segregation, dying at the hands of police. There were no comedic people out there protesting and fighting. You know, there was no one else there. There was no Muslims. There was no Hindus, no Buddhists. None of that was going on. I mean, the only people that was actually out there fighting to see a change in this country was Christians. And like I always say, it's always so funny how nowadays we've progressed so much that we've forgotten how black and white and Hispanic Christians and Asians and all of these people came together who were, who understood what the gospel message was and they actually went out and they fought against segregation. They were a part of the civil rights movement. And now all of a sudden we got people saying that, you know, it's okay for us to start segregating again. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, I mean, it's just beyond me. But anyway, guys, you know, as usual, that's enough of my rant. Uh, I want you guys to like, rate, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And uh, you guys have a blessed day.